Hey my friends, Sam Haymart for Test Driven TV. It's that time of the month again for a mowdown where I take some of the most interesting viewer comments and questions and I answer them. Sometimes I roast them, but either way, you're going to know what I think. All right, guys, this is always unrehearsed and unedited, so there's going to be a few things in here that aren't perfect like we try to do with our drive reviews, and I've got notes here as well to answer some of those questions. Now, our first comment here is on the 2016 Subaru BRZ, the test drive I did about a month or two ago, and, well, it was a really good review. I liked the car a lot, but I did have a little bit of issue with the engine, and, well, I sort of went on a bit of a tirade on that. Where's the turbo? Where's the turbo? Anyway, what I got from some of you out there, some Subaru files, is that you weren't real happy with my take on the engine. And, well, here's a comment that really got my attention here. You are being very whiny in this review. A turbo wouldn't necessarily jive with the character of this car. I think they should actually lighten the car even more and make the engine a bit more torquey. But it would not be the same car with the turbo. Now, the thing is here is you almost sort of agree with me here. You say I'm whiny on one hand, but on the other hand, you agree with me on the fact that my biggest thing with this engine is that there's no torque curve. You've got 200 horsepower, which is plenty of power. This really isn't about the horsepower. It's, it's about the fact that from RPM zero to about 5,000, there's nothing in between there. And on a racetrack, this car is absolutely golden because that engine sings. You keep it between five and 7,000 RPM, and it's really great because it just really revs up high and it stays there and you've got a helmet on so you can't hear the sound it's making. And I'll tell you, look, I don't get any trophies for doing negative car reviews and if you watch the whole review you see that this is an awesome car. I loved it a lot except for the engine. And truth be told, I actually got a phone call from Subaru about this review. They weren't very happy about it either. And so it's probably going to be a while before you see me test drive one of these Subarus again. At least you know what I do is real. I give my opinion whether people are going to like it or not. Now I will tell you this, I'm test driving the 2017 Toyota FRS, the other version of this car, here in about two or three weeks. That car has a revised engine in it that may address some of these issues. They're just tweaking it a little bit, not a lot of horsepower, but they've retuned the thing and it may very well have better drivability and I'll let you know when that comes. Moving on, the next one. Now we did a face-off video and what I do on these face-offs is I take test drives that I've done on two different vehicles and I edit them together so that we can do a comparison side by side. Sometimes I render a winner, sometimes I don't. And on this particular face-off, it was on the Nissan Titan Crew Cab V8 and the Ford F-150, also a Crew Cab with a V8. Pretty rare birds, at least for the Ford. So I put those two together, and in this test drive for the Nissan, as well as in that face-off, I sat in the back seat and I talked about the fact that there's gun storage underneath that seat. It's not necessarily called gun storage, but it's designed such that you can lay a rifle in there. And I qualified it by saying, I'm not a gun nut, I'm not doing product placement for the NRA, and I got a lot of comments about that. Why would you apologize about mentioning a rifle can be stowed under the seat? Why does owning a firearm make you a gun nut? I'm so sick of spineless journalists that are scared of saying what they think due to political correctness. I got another comment very similar, hey jackass. Many truck owners and buyers out there are Second Amendment folks. I won't be subscribing to your liberal channel. Okay, now let me give you some background on this. I did, a few months ago, as actually earlier, quite, quite some time ago, I did this review on the Dodge Journey. Under the passenger seat was this great place to do storage, and this is what I said. You've got a great place for things like a box of Kleenex and a first aid kit, or maybe even a concealed handgun. So... When I did that, I got tons of comments from really crazy, whacked out people that were threatening. I had to take these comments down, and I still have to. These were anti-gun people that were just completely out of their mind because I even said the word gun in a video, let alone suggest that you can put a concealed weapon under the passenger seat. And these people, they just came out of the woodwork and went absolutely nuts. And so, look. I'm not a gun nut, I'm not an anti-gun nut, I'm not a nut at all, but the thing is, I grew, up, I grew up around guns, I'm comfortable around them, but I don't own one, I'm not a member of the NRA, but 
I'm not, you know, I'm not against guns. They're legal. They're a Second Amendment right in most places. But that said, so when I did this video, I, I simply said, look, this is where you can put a rifle because it's really designed pretty well for that. And so I wasn't apologizing for you guys that came at me from the other direction. I was simply qualifying it and letting the anti-gun nuts out there, the people that really freak out more than the people who are supposed to be gun nuts, um, let them know that, hey, this is just what's going on here. Now, <clears throat> that's one of the reasons I don't do politics, because there's no way to win. And obviously with the gun thing here, there's if you talk about guns, you're going to get it from one side to the other, depending on how you sound. So I'll just simply say that I think people on both sides of this issue, let alone any issue, just need to relax a little bit here, you know? I mean, this is just supposed to be fun. Now, on the very same video, I have another comment here. A person said, so which one would you choose if it was your money, the Nissan Titan or the Ford F-150? Now, actually, to be honest with you, neither. And here's why. The Nissan Titan XD, the heavier duty version of the Titan, is really my favorite. And I had a chance uh, recently, I was at the reveal of the new single cab Titan, Titan XD both. And they had a Titan XD work truck there, just a base S grade with the Cummins. And I really liked that truck a lot. I was really kind of going, wow, I want this. And the Titan XD that we tested earlier this year actually made it to my buy it list. So to answer your question, I would probably go with the Titan XD. That's where my money would go, not so much on the half ton because, boy, you know, as it relates to trucks, if you're going to go all the way to a full-size truck, at least for me, my money is best spent on a heavy-duty version of a full-size truck. The other end of the spectrum for me is the mid-size trucks. I like the Chevy Colorado. I like the GMC Canyon, both with that little Duramax. I love those trucks also on my buy it list. So I wouldn't buy the half ton, not because they're not good, but uh, of those two brands in that situation, I do kind of lean Nissan personally, just because I like the new Titan. I've driven it a lot and I really think they've done a good product there. It's not to say the Ford isn't any good, but I really do like the Nissan personally. So there's that. Next question, as soon as I get down here under my notes, to get it. Also on a pickup, 2017 Ford Super Duty first drive impressions. And uh, the, one of the comments here was, great job as always, Sam. First of all, thank you, I appreciate that. You and Motormouth are easily the best. Now that is a compliment, because I like Motormouth a lot, and uh, you know all of us in this business is very collegial, and I really do take that as a compliment. Now that out of the way, I meant to ask you from a previous video, what is your beef with Consumer Reports? They have the most extensive reliability survey and do all of their testing independently of the company knowing. So what gives? Backstory here is actually on one of the last uh, mowdowns that we did, I said F Consumer Reports because some guy said, well, Consumer Reports said this, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, no, who cares what they say? The thing about Consumer Reports is, is I agree with you, uh, they do very good work. They have a lot of data and it's good data, it's solid data, and I've actually recommended Consumer Reports to people who ask me, I want to buy this car, is it reliable? Because honestly, I don't test on reliability. I don't have the ability to keep these cars for two or three years and let you know. But the thing about Consumer Reports is, if I have a resentment about them, it's about the fact that years and years ago, I used to sell cars. I used to work in a Mazda dealer selling cars. Customers would come in, they'd, they'd test drive our car, and then they'd say, well, Consumer Reports says this, and they say that, and blah, blah, blah. And these people didn't know anything about cars. They had no brain of their own. These people were like mind-numbed robots that were programmed by Consumer Reports, and that's all they cared about. They, they'd come in and waste my time as a car salesman driving my car, and then they'd leave, and they'd, on their way out the door, they'd say, well, we're going to go buy the Camry or whatever because Consumer Reports says it's best. Well, do you like the Camry? Well, not as much. I like the Mazda better, but Consumer Reports says the Camry is better. So I, I kind of got this built-in resentment against Consumer Reports because they create this, this flock of sheep out there that, that take choices that are based on, well, no emotion. They, they just, they make choices based on what they say. And to me, that just isn't living. You know, you gotta take risks. You gotta, you gotta, you know, eat the donut once in a while, even though it might not be healthy for you. It's just, I don't know, it's just one of those things. So I like Consumer Reports and what they do. They do have a lot of data. I look at it, but a car is a lifestyle thing. It's not just, you know, what's on a spreadsheet. So there's that. That's kind of long and lengthy, but that's my explanation there, if it makes any sense. Now, uh, whoop, I just messed up here. 
I told you this is unedited. Where is the comment? Ah, here we are. Now, on the 2017 Nissan Titan Crew Cab review, gentleman asks, what kind of boots do you have? He looked at the boots in my, in my review. They look great. I've been shopping for a good pair. These are actually Dingo Dean harness boots. I love them myself. They're actually the first boots that I bought to do my videos with. And they went along with my cowboy hat years ago when I first started. And I actually have, I've got several pairs of boots. I'm kind of a boot guy. I like collecting different styles and whatnot. I've got combats and a lot of Dark Martins. But these boots here, uh, they really work well for me. I love the style and they work with most of my jeans. I've got some straight leg jeans that I can't wear those with because they just don't work out. But I'll tell you, it's actually, uh, it's getting time for me to replace these things. They're getting a little bit worn and makes me think, if you want to help me replace them, you know, we've got this thing on our website, testdriven.tv. There's a donate button there for PayPal. You see, I do this 100%. This is how I make my living. It's how I pay my mortgage. It's how I feed myself. It's how I pay my gym membership. It's how this all works. I don't have a day job. This is it. And so it's 100% advertising. And believe it or not, it just isn't that much. So if you've ever thought, boy, I'd like to send Sam two or 300 bucks or maybe five or $10. I'm just kidding you guys. But seriously, if, if you've ever asked yourself that question, and I've actually had people ask if they could donate, and I always send them to my website. On the right sidebar, there's a little donate PayPal button, and I'd welcome anything because this is what I do for a living. I'm very passionate about it, and uh, I'm not afraid to ask for a tip once in a while, a thank you, whatever you might like. And if you put your address in the notes, I'll send you a Test Driven TV sticker. That's the best I can offer you. Now. All of the videos we just talked about, you'll see the links to down below in the information section if you want to see the video and, and see what we're talking about here. Also, if you don't want to donate money, send me two or three hundred bucks, click on the link right here and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll be just as happy if you do that because more viewers means more views. And we do a lot of videos, one or two videos a week like this, as well as one or two test drives a week. Lots of stuff. So stay tuned. I love you guys.